In this lecture, we want to talk about so-called OLAP cubes. This is an alternative method to further increase the performance of our data marts. And actually it's a quite established and mature technology. And that's why we now want to understand what are those cubes and what is the role of them in our data warehouse. So in a traditional data warehouse, we've learned the data is stored usually in a relational database where we have the data organized into tables that can have certain relations with each other. But now in a cube, the data is not organized in tables with relations, but in a non-relational way and into dimensions. So we have multiple dimensions and we'll soon understand what this exactly means. But we need to just first understand that this is the differentiation between a relational database. And that's why we also refer to this as MOLAB because the more precise expression for a cube is a multi-dimensional data set. And in this multi-dimensional data set, the data, as I've mentioned, is not organized into tables with columns and rows, but into so-called arrays. And we'll see how this works practically in just a minute. The main reason why we want to use those cubes, this is what I want to underline, is for analytical purposes, whenever we need to have a fast query performance. And that's why they are used exclusively in the data marts. And then if we have those cubes created with some technology, some software, we can use those cubes in different BI solutions. So for example, in Excel, we can also use those cubes. But now let's find out how do these cubes work and how is the data structured there? So a cube, if we want to see that visually, is organizing the data, for example, we want to analyze the sales data into multiple dimensions. And be aware that we can have more than just three dimensions, but more than three dimensions is difficult to draw and that's why we use three dimensions. So in our case, we have products, time and customers and we want to analyze the sales. So this is what we want to measure across those multiple dimensions. And now we can use those arrays and those cells to slice and dice our data. For example, we can use the intersection from a certain customer in a certain month or on a certain time to get the amount of sales from that. So we want to measure the sales and we can now slice and dice the data to get a specific data point calculated. And this data is now, this is where the benefit from these cubes is coming from, is pre-calculated. So the values in those cells is already calculated so that when we want to see the data, visualize it and use it in our tools, it's already calculated and already available. So it's aggregated in such a way like we want to see it later on in our reports or in our applications. And now this technology is different from SQL and usually it is used the MDX language. So that's the multi-dimensional expression that was developed by Microsoft and is now the most commonly used query language to query data from cubes. And also we have said that the purpose of those cubes is to get high performance due to these pre-calculated values. And we get the main benefit if we use it in interactive tools where hierarchies play a role and we need to drill and slice and dice the data because then we can benefit from this dimensional data set. And since this is a different technology and the data is stored in a different way, we've learned that this is not stored in relational databases, but we have multi-dimensional databases. So the hardware is also a different one. But now what does this mean for us in practice? So here are some recommendations. These multi-dimensional cubes should be built for a specific 
use case. And that's why we use them in data marts where we have specific tables, only those tables that are relevant for a specific use case are loaded into our cube and organized in our cube because the more data we get, the more tables, the more dimensions, the more complex it gets. So the less user friendly and the lower also our performance gets. So the benefit of this is high if we have not so many dimensions ideally and that's why we should use for every specific use case a separate data mart so that we have the most benefit from those cubes. And as we've learned, the most we get out of these cubes, if they are used in interactive tools where we have queries with many hierarchies, where the data is sliced and diced. So that's why these are usually visualization tools. For example, in Excel, we can use those cubes. But also I want to mention that this is optional and we don't necessarily need a cube. We can also just use a relational database if we have enough query performance and we can organize the data just into a star schema. And then optionally, we can use the data from the relational database and load it into our cube. And the star schema, we will later on, of course, learn what this means exactly. But now the cubes, if we want to increase the query performance, is not the only method of increasing our performance. We've already learned that we have these in-memory databases and with the advancement of those in-memory databases and better performance, those cubes, because sometimes they can be a little bit more technical, a little bit more complex. Therefore, since we have now better hardware, those cubes actually are getting a little bit less important. They are still relevant, but we have now better hardware today. And there are now also alternative methods of storing the data. For example, we can have tabular models. This is used commonly also by Microsoft. So we have now columnar storage, parallel processing, and different methods that are now making those cubes less important because the alternatives are getting better and better. And also if the performance on our relational database is good, which today is oftentimes the case, we can also just stick with our relational database. So this is now the methods and technologies that we can use in our data marts to ensure a good query performance if it is necessary.